my god, bro. Who's the gist nerd now? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yo. How crazy is this? I know. This is like, great. Can I stand like this the whole time? Get a, I can get my forces on. <laughs> Listen, if you put Gerald Mearshart at plus 300, you can go and cash that ticket. If you listen to us at the media day and you listen to him and he said, hey, bet on Gerald Mearshart by sub, you'd be making more money right now. Gerald Mearshart GM3, my God, what the hell? That was absolutely <laughs> wild in there, bro. You look like a new fighter. Yeah, I really opened up. Uh, I showed a lot of my stand up and I just, I got out of my own head and I said, I have the skills to stand with these guys. Like everyone knows I'm such a dangerous submission fighter, so that only helps, right? If I threaten to take down, you know, you gotta be so concentrated on that, you forget about the hands. And then before it's, you know, it's too late by the time you figure out that I can actually strike pretty good. Bruno Silva just fought Alex Pereira, right? His striking is absolutely no slouch. So you're in there and you're consistently moving to your right. You're dipping under his left hand. You're looking unbelievable in there. Was that something you scouted, that consistent movement to the right? Yeah, uh, so I wanted a little more side to side motion, but it was just easy to go to the right. I could time his left really well. Uh, if he looped it, he was too short to catch me. And if he reached, he leaned over so far that I could dip under and see it coming. And uh, just as the fight played out, I was like, man, I'm faster on the outside. I can touch him and frustrate him as long as I don't get touched up too much. Cause you know, he cracked me a couple of times that were good. And then, you know, I got really good kicks. I just haven't shown a lot of them. I mixed in the kicks, I wore them out. And as soon as I saw that opening, that left hand baby, the money maker, set it all up. Bro, you could almost see it in the first round because you were kind of, I don't want to say tentative because you weren't, you were just kind of analyzing what he was doing. He was throwing a lot of strikes and you were just kind of countering, moving, slipping. He did land a big shot to your body in the first round. We saw some, some redness on your side there. Did you feel that? Yeah, the kick I felt, it was a good solid kick. So I was like, mm, maybe shouldn't wait around for that next time. But. Uh, yeah, I was definitely analyzing him while doing it in the safe way, right? I'm touching him, I'm moving, I'm making sure he can't touch me. And then, you know, once I was really comfortable that I could get his timing right, I knew he would have to advance. And I don't think he wanted to charge because he knew that takedown was there. And then when he did open up, I got the takedown on the first. I didn't advance my position super fast like a lot of guys do to allow him to scramble. So I was controlling on top, putting weight on him, you know, little elbow shots, trying to get my strikes in and just wear him out. And then after that, he was much more tentative about closing that distance, which allowed me to really open up with my hands and kicks a little bit more because he knew if he got too close, I was putting him on his back. That was the moment in the first round where we were like, okay, Gerald's got his timing now. Was that when you noticed it as well, when you slipped that shot and went in for the takedown and basically ended the first round on top? Were you like, okay, I got his timing now? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think he felt how strong I was. And I felt his strength too, like in the clinch, he was like an all or nothing guy, right? You clinch up with him, there's certain spots where you could feel him like try to explode, but then that was it. Whereas I think he felt when I got him down, you know, I'm heavy on top. I can be real controlling if I want to, and I'm, you know, I'm not a small guy either. So once I had that timing down, I knew he would either have to come towards me and give me that takedown again, or like he did, he had to stay away, which opened up for the punches and the kicks. And then as soon as he got real tired, he popped that head up, dropped him. I almost thought I was gonna have a walk off I saw the ref kind of come in, but then I admired my work for too long, and I hit a couple more times. I was like, man, this dude's too freaking tough for this shit, so I just grabbed that neck like I always do and got out of there. It was a Conor McGregor-esque left hand. It was a straight left right down the pipe. But I almost, I almost had a moment where it was like, oh, damn. When you went for the choke, I was like, oh, no, he's going to pull a Glover when he went and tried to put the guillotine on Yuri. I was like, no, he's going to. And then I remembered. I was like, Dude, this is Gerald Mearshart yeah, we're right. talking about. You know what I mean? The guy wins by submission. So, hey, man, we're here. We're like, here. We're doing it. We're really doing it. This is great, man. <laughs> is Just great. for background, listen, I've known this guy since I was, like, on the come up, like, working out of my basement and stuff. He's one of the first guys to ever support me. Now I'm here interviewing him at the UFC face-to-face. -face. Gerald Mearshart's a fun guy. Oh, geez, we're fun guys, baby. Appreciate you. All right, boys, real quick, go to fullsend.com. They collaborated with Bored Ape and Happy Dad. You can check out this T-shirt right here. I'm wearing this to the weigh-ins. Like I said, fullsend.com. Happy Dad collab with Bored Ape. Get yourself some merch, boys.